From a top to mighty mountain with the rushing waterfalls. The spirit comes across the earth and touches us all. Take my hand and come walk with me. Brothers and sisters, we all can be. With the creatures on the land, in the water and the air, we can come together in a glow. Harriet Beecher Stowe was a courageous visionary woman. Her book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, offered vital popular support for the movement to abolish slavery. But Harriet Beecher Stowe was also a strong proponent of the movement to emancipate animals from human abuse. People today might wonder why she worked so hard to bring justice even to the animals. And her explanation was simple. It is, she writes, a matter of taking the side of the weak against the strong something the best people have always done. The best people. I think Harriet Beecher Stowe is right about that. Just consider some of the other great men and women who share her positive concern for animals. The poets Robert Browning, Percy Bysshe Shelley, and Christina Rossetti recall her lovely line, other eyes than ours were made to look on flowers. And the writers, Leo Tolstoy, Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw, and America's own Mark Twain. Emil Zola sums up well the bonds of compassion that these best people share. The fate of animals, Zola writes, is more important to me than the fear of appearing ridiculous. It is indissolubly connected with the fate of man. Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein, the naturalist John Muir, and India's Mahatma Gandhi, the painters Leonardo da Vinci, Henri Rousseau, Edwin Landseer, and Marc Chagall. Each in his own way would endorse Abraham Lincoln's observation when he says, I am in favor of animal rights as well as human rights. That is the way of a whole human being. Too few people know how rich and deep are the cultural roots of enlightened concern for animals. To educate the public about these roots, that's one of the goals of our foundation, the Culture and Animals Foundation. We call it the research program. But those best people Harriet Beecher Stowe refers to aren't all from the past. There are contemporary painters sculptors, poets, legal theorists, philosophers, all on the cutting edge of our best art and thought, and all united by their informed concern for animals. Those gifted hands and minds need to be given tangible, meaningful support. That's the second goal of the Culture and Animals Foundation, what we call the Creativity Program. Everyone understands the folly of keeping one's light under a bushel. Ideas are like lights. They need to be where people go if they're to have a major impact. That's why CAF, the Culture and Animals Foundation, also has a performance program. The CAF-sponsored art show Animal Scapes, Animal Awareness in Art, is a case in point. The show included work by such major 20th century artists as Joseph Hirsch, Jamie Wyeth, and Robert Rauschenberg, himself a member of CAF's Distinguished Advisory Board. But it also included work by Christine Stevens, who gave up a promising career as a painter to devote full time to animal welfare concerns. Also exhibited were works by the rising generation of talented painters, Carol Gigliotti with her Dante series, and Matt Taisley with his powerful protest art. 
For some, like Sandy Eiley, whose work has been exhibited widely, Animalscapes was a new, inspiring experience. One interesting thing, normally when I'm in a show where there are a group of other artists also hanging things, everyone's very concerned about getting their own work displayed to the best advantage. And in this show, there was none of that. There was just the sense of what can we do that is going to best get across the, the message that we want the, of attracting people to this, um, this cause. And it was a wonderful bonding experience that I won't forget. Involving and reaching new people. That's CAF's main goal. Animalscapes is one way we've done this. Our film, We Are All Noah, is a second. Here are the people we try to reach are the members of the religious community. We inform them about some of the abuses of animals in the lab, on the farm, in the wild, and at the pound. But we also offer glimpses of the progressive responses being made by compassionate religious people everywhere. We Various liturgies already contain a ceremony for blessing animals, and increasingly these are being used. ...of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit upon all these animals today. These are occasions for a public affirmation of our love of animals and of God's love for all creatures, both the small and the great. won a silver medal at the 1986 International Film and Television Festival of New York, the toughest, most competitive film festival in the world. That medal has helped put CAF on the cultural map. What made this report stand out among all the others in order to get a silver award? I think what it showed was that the animal rights movement is not outside this uh, convention, but inside it. We uh, represent a group of talented, gifted people who are dedicated to the craft and who are united by their concern about the abuse and exploitation of animals. And I think that when the judges saw the quality of the film and the concern of the people uh, addressing the issues, they couldn't refuse the prize to us. What is your goal? Our goal is to raise consciousness, is to replace ignorance with knowledge and to replace apathy with concern. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Dick. Black tie and tuck sometimes have to give way to less formal attire if CAF's goals are to be realized. There is a popular culture out there whose interests need to be met and whose major performers include some wonderful friends of animals like Country Joe McDonald, shown here in a benefit performance given for the foundation. care for the animals and the children, yes, but also the elderly. In fact, one of CAF's ambitions is to show our concern for the elderly, not only so that we can help them when they need it, but so that they can teach us. For some of the best people are gifted, dedicated, older men and women, senior citizens, who give their life meaning by working to bring health and justice to animals. Their story needs to be told. Calf intends to see that it is, boldly, tastefully, creatively, a film certainly, and perhaps the stage. The stage is the medium Rachel Rosenthal has chosen to express her concern for animals. 
Calf already has supported a production of her stunning performance artwork called The Others. The empathy that I feel for animals is such that uh, on an emotional level, I'm, I'm a wreck. And because of that, all the time that I was doing performance, I avoided the subject of animals because I felt that I didn't have the distance and I was just too, too involved, too, too emotional about it that I wasn't able to make art out of it. And finally, last year, I decided that feeling as I do, it was almost like a responsibility to put it out in art. I just love fur. Oh, and makeup. Well, yes, I know about the Dre's test. Rabbits in stocks, testing cosmetics, their eyes burnt out, their little backs broken, all that stuff. Well, look, that's why we breed them, isn't it? I mean, if we didn't breed them, they wouldn't even be alive. That gives us some rights, right? Whoa! Now, don't you tell me I can't eat meat. The issue of animal welfare is a key issue, not just for other creatures, but for us as humans. Because so long as we as humans can take a group of other humans and say, label them as subhuman or like animals, then we can give ourselves permission to treat them the way we treat animals, which is a ghastly way. Science fairs promote science projects for school children. These projects include vivisection, poisoning, malnutrition, starvation, inducement of psychoses, and other procedures in experiments on live animals. We teach our children that the best way to know an animal is to cut it up. The theater is empty now. The stage, deserted. But all who attended, the others, will not forget what took place here. That climactic scene with Rachel Rosenthal in the foreground giving a flower to each of the animals and their human companions. Everyone calm and at ease, that scene has the power of myth and legend. Only its power is even greater, for it was tangible and real. The peaceable kingdom, here and now. Susie. All of us associated with the Culture and Animals Foundation take pride in the work we have done in support of research, creativity, and performance. We are committed to doing nothing less and hopefully a great deal more in the future. Our goal is to help more and more people take the hand of the best people, both those who extend their hands from the past as well as those who live with us in the present so that the animals with whom we share the earth and the earth itself might benefit. The challenge is great, but so is the promise. It is, in Lincoln's words, the way of a whole human being that both inspires and calls us. Vision of a planet in peace and harmony Brothers and sisters, we all can be. And with the creatures on the land, in the water and the air, we can come together in a global affair. I gaze into the sky and I saw the rain. Precious.